to take this opportunity uh, to speak to the people in the city of Houston. Uh, but let me start off by extending my prayers to the family of George Floyd. Um, certainly want to extend my family to his siblings and all of his family members, his friends, uh, those individuals that he grew up with, uh, went to school with. Uh, Mr. Floyd was a native Houstonian, uh, grew up in Third Ward, as we say, the Trey, and a graduate of Jake's, uh, Yakes High School, uh, and played ball at Yakes so, in the early 90s. So I certainly uh, want to extend my prayers, my condolences uh, to, to, his, to his family. Uh, as I watched the video, like millions of people across, across this uh, country, if not globally, it was highly disturbing. Uh, and from what I saw, uh, his death, his death was avoidable. Uh, to see the police officer with a knee on, with a knee, uh, on his neck applying pressure uh, for right at nine minutes uh, was painful, painful to watch. Um, it was not justified. You can't excuse it. Uh, and the failure, the failure of the other officers, police officers who were right there, uh, their failure to intervene, that too was inexcusable. Um, and from my vantage point, um, they became enablers. They may not have been the ones applying their knee to the neck of Mr. Floyd, but they certainly took no steps to, uh, to prevent it uh, and to stop it, and so they became enablers. And, I, and that video was simply very uh, painful to watch. Uh, there is a lot of pain. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of hurt, raw emotions, frustrations, not just for the people in Minneapolis, but people all around, all around this country. Uh, certainly the pain of his family, Mr. Floyd's family, is immeasurable, and none of us are in their shoes. Uh, but the pain and uh, the anger, the frustrations are simply uh, evident and quite, for, and quite understandable. Today in, in our city, like in, in many cities across this country, uh, people have protested, they've come, to, come together, they have assembled. Um, and let me just say, uh, as the mayor of this city, people have a right to march, they have a right to demonstrate, they have a right to protest. Uh, and I understand that. I understand that. What I would ask as the mayor of this city in Houston, I would ask that as people march, as they protest, as they demonstrate, as they stand up to, to voice their frustrations and their disapproval, that they do it peacefully, peacefully in our city. Um, that they not you know, uh, block roads or streets or engage in activity uh, that uh, simply uh, is destructive. I understand the pain and the hurt. Uh, and I understand the frustrations. And I understand when people uh, seem to believe that the system is, is not moving fast enough or the system is not being responsive. I understand that. Um, and so what I would ask of people in our city, Houstonians and people in our city, that as you demonstrate a protest, if that, if that is your choice, please do so peacefully and respectfully within our city. In this city, the city in which I grew up in and a native and still live in the same community in which I was born and reared, in this city, we value human life. We value each and every person, regardless of the neighborhood in which you were born or reared. If you grew up, for example, or live in Third Ward, the Trey, we value you. If you grow, grew up or live in Denver Harbor, the East End, we value you. If you have grown up and live in Fifth Ward, the Nickel, we value you. If you have grown up and live in Acres Home, the Fofo, we value you. 
If you live in Westbury or Spring Branch or uh, in Midtown, any commu- in Fort Bend, wherever you live in this city, we value you. And we recognize in this city that there are many communities and neighborhoods that have been underserved and under-resourced for decades, not just in the past few years, but for decades. And that's why under my administration, our eyes are focused on these communities that have been underserved and under-resourced. To say to the people in these communities, in these neighborhoods, in the hood, that we see you and we choose not to ignore you and we do not want to treat you with disrespect and we want to do everything we can to make sure that we treat you with the, with the respect and the decency that you rightfully deserve. We recognize any inequities that exist within our city. We recognize that. And we are taking an internal look even within our own city, to improve those inequities, to prove to make to make to work every single day to make things better. We recognize our diversity. And we recognize that we must constantly assess and evaluate the things that we are doing, such that the city works for everyone at every level of operation. We also recognize in our city that communities and law enforcement and law enforcement and communities must work hand in hand together on the same team, moving in the same direction. And for those of us who have lived in this city for a long, long time, we recognize the strain and sometimes the, re- the strain relationships that sometimes have existed between police and, f- and, and the community. But collectively, we've worked very, very hard to build those relationships, to make them positive, because we recognize that the two, community and law enforcement, law enforcement and community, we have to work together because we have mutual interests, and we need to work together in order to move this city forward. So on behalf of this city, the city that we all deeply love. I understand these are challenging times. Uh, I understand what people have uh, witnessed and that uh, George Floyd is no longer with us, that he was, though though he was in Minneapolis, he's a native Houstonian, and the, and the, 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 the frustration and the emotions are running very high. But let me please ask you as a mayor of this city that as you demonstrate your frustrations and and as you deal with your pain, to do it in such a way that will not work against our city and everyone who lives in our city. That is my ask as we move forward and to work every day to make this city and our society a much better place in which to live. Thank you. Mayor, uh, we looked at a few people being taken into custody. Can you say how many people were arrested today or so far? You know, I've asked that number. I've been told uh, not that many. There have been some, but the number has been relatively uh, few. And uh, people were taken into custody, for example, if they attempted to block the road or the streets, leading to, for example, the freeways uh, in the downtown area. In those cases, they were, they were arrested. Uh, but I'm not told of any situation where anybody has been injured. Um, and I don't know the exact number, but I asked that question before coming, before coming down, and I was told it's a, it's a relatively small number. That I don't know. I don't know if that person was arrested or not. But I am, I am aware, I'm aware of that incident. Can we see destruction in Minneapolis specifically? Do you have any fears that that could happen here in Houston? Well, I, I hope it, it doesn't happen in the, city, in the city of Houston. Anything can happen in any, in any city at any point in time. And that's why I wanted to take the opportunity uh, to talk to the people, talk to the people in this city. Um, look, 
when I saw the video, the clip, it was, it, it was painful and, and, and went deep, you know, into my own psyche. Um, and you can't justify it, you know. Any person, especially law enforcement with the badge of authority, applying your knee to someone's neck when a person is on the ground, already handcuffed and posing no threat, you cannot justify that. And to keep the, your knee on that person for almost nine minutes, is, you just can't justify it. And so, so I understand the emotions. I, I know how I felt. Okay? I, 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 got, I understand that. Uh, but what I would ask, and I'm glad that they, have, that they have taken steps to arrest the person as they look at the others who were standing there uh, watching and not stopping that incident, which I call enablers. Um, but what I would say is that the answer is not to, is not to tear down our cities, okay? That's not the answer. I have chosen, for example, to continue to live in the same neighborhood in which I was born and reared. I am still in Acres Home of the Fofo, the north side. Not in Third Ward, okay? But I understand. So, um, and, and in all of our communities, every person from Third Ward to Fifth Ward to Denver Harbor to the East End, Fort Bend, all of our communities, every person in our community is important and should be respected and valued. But people are frustrated and people are angry and people are experiencing pain and people want to be heard and people want change. Okay. So, uh, and they act out um, in many ways to get people's attention. And what I am saying to people in this city, for those of us who are serving in this city, we recognize the inequities that exist. And we're working every single day to address those inequities. We recognize that. And so protests, I got it. Demonstrate march, I got it. You have that right. I only ask that you do it peacefully and respectfully. There were some of uh, vehicles uh, that were damaged. Uh, um, windows may have been shattered or they may have been uh, keyed or however you want to put it, scratched. Uh, so there may, have been, there may have been some damage. Were you surprised by the number of people? Well, I, number one, I, I want to thank the, the hundreds of people who, who marched and demonstrated uh, peacefully. You know? Uh, the, the overwhelming percentage of people did so peacefully. They, they expressed their view, they demonstrated their frustrations uh, and their pain. And so I want to thank them. But sometimes there are some, there are few, who want to take it, go beyond that. And I'm simply asking, asking uh, those individuals, no, don't do that. Because I know that just like we had uh, protests or demonstrations today, we'll probably have some on Saturday and be in the days to come. Okay? I'm simply asking people uh, to um, love our city enough to do so in a respectful way. And people will hear you. People see you. I certainly hear you and I certainly see you. Okay? And all of us can always do things better. And we all want to be held accountable. But give us an opportunity to improve things, to make things better. I know uh, one of the things that several protesters mentioned was the, the string of officer law shootings here in Houston. Um, I know you said you've reviewed footage from several of those cases. Do you have any new message to them? Any I've, been, I've reviewed the, the clips and the footage of the, of the last four or five with the exception of last night, uh, the last four. And each one, of those in the, each one of those cases, when you look at them, you have to look at them individually. What happens when you see things that are taking place, for example, like in Minneapolis, it amplifies every, every law enforcement officer's 
um, interaction or shooting and amplifies it and is viewed through those lens. But when you look at in, in, in many of those cases, I think you will find that those incidents were justifiable. We, we, what I've said to Chief Acevedo, please let the family see the video. Let the family see it, and in some cases they have. And in one case in particular, for example, uh, the family members saw the video and did not want us to release. They requested specifically and put it on their, on their uh, Instagram, saying we do, not, we, are, we do not want the city to release. So no one wants to, uh, a police involved shooting. Sometimes the circumstances um, will dictate what the outcome is. Doesn't mean that the police officer did anything wrong. Doesn't mean that. In one case, for example, it was a senior citizen coming from the store that was fatally killed and the police officer was responding. This was a, this was a woman in her 80s. She didn't ask for doing anything wrong. And the police officer was responding to that fatal incident. So what, what, what happens sometimes is everything is, is pretty much uh, conflated and viewed through the lens of things that are happening all over the country. But having said all of that, we are constantly reviewing our internal procedures and practices to make sure that we're engaged in best practices and where we need to do better. We certainly want to do that. Training becomes critically important. Making sure that we are addressing any systematic things within our uh, profile that we need to address. So we're constantly doing that. But we certainly want the families to take a look at the videos first, and then we'll go from there. Do you know uh, what specific highways were disrupted today? Are there any reports of the Gulf Freeway, the US 59? That was an attempt to get up on um, um, uh, I 45 from Walker and then going down further on uh, 59. Um, and then I think may have been trying to get up on the highway off of Pierce. Uh, in those particular cases, there may, been, there may have been a few others. And, uh, and that's dangerous. It's dangerous for the people who are attempting to, to get on the freeway, and then you have traffic that's going. So it's dangerous for everyone. Uh, and uh, I'll simply ask people, that's not necessary. That's, you know, please don't do it. I'm asking people respectfully not to do that. Well, what I'm saying is that, look, we have police officers who put their lives on the line every single day. Okay? Every single day. A couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, I went to the funeral of a police officer who put his life, life on the line and not returning home to his family. And since I've been mayor, I've gone to uh, uh, other funerals of police officers who put their life on the line and then returned home to their family. The police and community are not, the, are not the enemy of one another, okay? We should be on the same page working together. Now, when there is a wrong or something done, then we need to be, be held accountable. And I got that, okay? But don't just, don't paint everybody with the same brush. That, that, that person or persons may have done something wrong, but there's still, you've got 98% of the others who are doing things right. I don't want people to look at me as an African American and say that uh, uh, if they see somebody, uh, somebody doing something wrong, every person is, 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 is painted with that broad brush. You don't want that, okay? So let's, let's hold people accountable. Let's do that. But I will tell you, we need law enforcement for public safety purposes, for them to do our jobs, to keep everybody safe, our families, our children, our loved ones. Okay? And they need us to also join with them in order to keep the community safe. And so the community and police officers, law enforcement, must work hand in hand and must work together. And that's what I don't want us to lose sight of. Okay, So... Um, but it is important when incidents occur, 
where people step across the line, that people be held accountable, and that we are transparent, and that we are constantly reviewing our processes and procedures and practices to make sure that we are engaged in best practices because it is, you do, it's hard to, to gain the respect of the community and you don't want to lose it. You want to gain it and you want to be able to maintain it. And so uh, that's, that's critically, critically important. And what I'm saying, that's why as the mayor of the city of Houston, on many of these incidents on police shootings, I've taken the opportunity myself to review the tapes myself and not just rely on what somebody else is saying. I've taken the steps to look at them. Okay. This is Houston. And I'm just simply asking us to stay together. I know the emotions can run high, but I'm simply asking us to stay together and let's work together to improve all of our systems. And my commitment to the people in this city, at least as long as I'm mayor, that we, re we are going to respect every single person in this city, regardless of where they live, regardless of their ethnicity, their language, regardless of their social economic status, we're going to respect every single person and we're going to work very, very hard to get it right and to always to strive to do it better. And we've got a lot of work to do ourselves, but we're going to work every single day to earn and to hold on to the trust that, and the confidence that people are placing in us. And that applies to us all, including myself. Thank you all so very much.